Hey guys, Eddie here with Hyperstore.com and today we're talking chainsaws and ignition coil modules. Alright, today we're going to be working on my favorite little chainsaw, the Still MS-180. And we're going to take a look at how to diagnose and change your ignition coil module. You may have seen the last episode talking about Hypa Spark Tester. We're going to use it to make sure that it is the ignition module that's the problem and not some other wiring in the system. So the first thing we're going to do is take off the top cover. It's real simple. You just got a lever in the back and then make sure that your choke lever is in the on position. Just makes it easier to pop the hood up. Take the cover right off. And our ignition module is right here. Now to change it, we are going to have to take this side cover off. But before we do that, let's do a quick diagnostic to see if the problem you are having with no spark on your engine is actually the ignition coil. So your ignition coil module is right here connected to the spark plug wire up to the spark plug. This can cause basically two problems. If it is bad, it will not spark, obviously. If it is going bad, it may spark, it may start up the machine, but then as the machine heats up, the machine will die. Let's pretend that you've used the spark tester and you've determined that you're not getting a spark. So the next step is to determine that it's the module itself that's not functioning and you don't have an, a problem with your wiring somewhere else. Easy way to do that, take off this plug right here Pull the machine through, and if it sparks, that means that your ignition coil is good. What you've done here is you've isolated the coil from the rest of the system. So it is not affected by the on-off switch. You see this little metal tab right here? That is what grounds the system to this wire, which is in on the choke lever, and that shuts the machine off. So what you've done by pulling this wire off is you've disconnected that system. So then if we set up our spark tester and we pull the machine through, if the ignition coil is bad, we will get no spark. If the ignition coil is good, we should get a spark. So let's try that. So you can see there that we do have a spark, which means that in this case our coil is good. So if we were getting spark in that condition, but no spark when, the, when this is plugged in, that means that there's some other problem in the system and the, the ignition coil is fine. However, let's say we didn't get a spark. Let's say the coil is bad. Very easy to change on these machines, and of course Hypa has a replacement for them. So I always like to make sure that the replacement is essentially the same thing, and it is, before getting into it. Saves you a little work, maybe. You may have seen a previous video where I pulled this cover off. It's very simple. You've got one, two, three, four screws to come off, and you also have to take the caps off, which means you want to set it in this orientation so that it doesn't leak out. You can empty it if you'd like or not. Also, while we're in there and while we have the caps off, I'm going to put some new caps on. Uh, these are also made by Hypa with the uh, tether here so they don't get lost. And we'll also be putting a new Hypa air filter on because it needs one. And even though it doesn't need one, I just want to check, try these out. We also have some new bumper spikes or felling dogs as they're called. Of course, all these items are available at HypaStore.com. So let's get right into it. Okay, I think I forgot to mention that all those screws are T25, Torx 25. The ones on the ignition coil module are the same as well. These are going to be T25. There's one here, and there's one there. So let's get those off. These are a little tight. You'll notice that the top one has the ground wire attached to it. Then we can take this wire off. This is the positive wire. And make sure we're undone from the plug. On this one we have this little, this little holder right here that holds the other wires. Should just pop right off. Like so. And there's our ignition coil. Now let's talk about this little spacer right here. Technically it's more than just a little spacer. It is supposed to automatically set the 
air gap on these saws. In other words, it restricts the amount of movement you have or amount of adjustment you have with your coil. However, don't trust them completely. When we go to set our air gap, that we do it the way it should be done. So I'm going to put that back on because it will help us keep alignment. But we're going to find us a card. And some people say to use a business card. However, here's a business card. It's 16 and a half thousandths, almost 17 thousandths. Most business cards are going to be in the, the 10 to 12 thousandths of an inch range, but there are cards out there that aren't. So, always a good idea to check whatever you're using. I'm just going to use this piece of spam mail that I got in the mailbox, and you can see that it is exactly 10 thousandths. For your air gap, which I will explain in just a second, you want between 8 and 12 thousandths. That's the recommendation by the manufacturer. So, usually go to the middle of that of 10 thousandths. You can also use a feeler gauge, however, you'll notice in just a second that that kind of gets a little tricky to get a feeler gauge in and out of there. The air gap is the distance between your coil and the magnet, which is on, which is right here. This is the magnet section of your rotor. You see there's a shiny bit, and then there's fins for air, circulation, and another shiny bit. This shiny bit doesn't have any magnets in it though. It's not as shiny as this shiny bit. So that's your that's the surface that you want to air gap. And like I said, it's the distance between this section of the coil, which has a slight curve in it, and this shiny bit, which is the magnets. So to reinstall it, I like to have the magnets out of the way to begin with because they will be attracted to the coil and it's kind of hard sometimes to get it started. So to put it back on, make sure our plastic piece is underneath and I like to start these screws by hand because you're going metal screw into aluminum casing and it is easy to cross thread. And you don't want to cross thread them because that's an expensive repair if you can't do it yourself. Make sure that you've put on your ground wire and then use a hand tool, not a machine tool, to run them in the rest of the way. I'm not going to tighten them up all the way. Then we can insert our card that we're going to use, our 10 thousandths card. And like I say, the manufacturer's recommendation is between 8 and 12 thousandths. I always like to go to the middle, as most people do. Turn our rotor around until the magnet is now contacting the coil and you can tell that because the coil is attracted to the magnet. Make sure everything is set properly and then we can tighten down the rest of the way. Don't need a lot of torque on these. You don't need to over tighten them. Now if we move this, this should move. The card should come out. You should be able to see a little bit of gap between the uh, magnets and the ignition coil. And get our wire on here, like so. And we can put our little holder thing back on. Okay, so that's basically how we want that. We want it sitting just like that. Just like that. All right, we've got our case back together. We've got the Hypa Spark Tester connected back up. Let's give it a pull and see if we've got spark. Nice spark there. Good spark there. Now I'm going to set it into the off position so that it should not spark. It's grounded out. And just to make sure that everything is wired up correctly, we only have two wires here. It's pretty much going to be wired correctly, but just to make sure. As you see, no spark. So let's put us a new air filter on and uh, go give it a little run. Hyperchain's making some nice fat chips. So be sure to check out hyperstore.com for more great products like this.